day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Then let's pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity to come to words and praise your holy name. Father, I know that we prayed initially. I want to pray now so I can just kind of put in sequence concerning uh, the session. I thank you for what you're about to do in our life. And I thank you for the lives that we will impact. Dude, because I know that you'll bring and have those who you want to be involved with this study. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that we make a difference. Uh, in my life as well as the lives of those who listen. Father, we we just submit to you and allow ourselves to be used by you. I give you the praise, the glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. So one of the things is that making common sense of God's word <laughs> is, 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 is to use and focus more on the word uh, more than anything else, right? As, as we go through the study, leave the word of God up there, right? And let the word of God uh, make the difference concerning your life and my life, what we're going to pull from as we move forward in our life. So we want to start making sense of God's word. That's the intent. That's the focus. And, and I look at Nehemiah 8, verse 8, is, is my foundational uh, objective, is to say, so they, they read in the book, in the law of God distinctly, and gave the sense and caused them to understand reading. So my objective is to, to share the understanding of God's word uh, in my life as well as your life. I'm saying this, let's start to incorporate the word of God in our life. So by doing that, one of the things I want to show you uh, is the, 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 the slide for the day. Uh, and if you look at it, it's, it's, it's saying managing your life risk in Christ and not by the law. And see, the reason I'm talking about that, I'm talking about from the fact that even from a re, from legalistic perspective, if our lives are trying to be governed, if you're trying to govern your life based on the law, based on the law, uh, then I think sometimes we miss God when he moves because we're too busy focusing on the law. And another thing too is stop trying to impose the law on other people because listen, the Bible said what the law could not do, and it was weak to the flesh. God sent his only son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin condemned in the flesh is that what the law could not do. And I was telling somebody the other day, there's even when we come up with a little rules and, and, and regulation and, and guardrails, they, they don't hold you accountable because your flesh is going to tell you over and over again, no. As long as your flesh can dominate you, laws, that's why Christ came, laws, rules, and guidelines are something that you can use, but don't make it so important that you buy by them because most cases we fail in those laws. We fail in those rules. But I came over to, uh, I come up with something today I wanted to share with you. I think maybe, uh, I think it would be beneficial. <laughs> I really do. I think this one will make a difference. If if we sit there and and, and start looking at uh, managing our risk in life, in Christ, meaning in the Word, uh, being led by the Holy Spirit is part of the risk. See, look, every I was sitting there, I brought it up because I'm saying this: when you when you drive there's a risk driving, right? There's a risk going, there's a risk that's taken every time you walk out of the house. There's a risk if you stay in the house. There's a risk period in our life, right? We, we, we're going to go through life with potential things that could happen to us. You know, uh, and, and, and therefore we, we calculate and make decisions based on the acceptable risk, even in, in, in businesses, right? Even in government, we, we, we make decisions, we make courses of actions based on the potential risk 
that we will encounter, right? Uh, and, and I like it because that, that's professionally addressing your, uh, your, you're making decisions. And then I like the fact is that if we seek God first, right? Seek first the kingdom of God first, meaning put God in the decision-making process of the risk that you have to take and the risk that you should assess prior to anything that you do. Well, there's a risk if we eat too much of uh, fatty food, right? There's a risk if we exercise or don't exercise. There's a risk if we study or don't study. There's a risk if we go to work and don't go to work. And as we go to work, we make decisions calculating the risk of the decision to make the best decision that we make. And I think this is great because we think about it when, when, when we get, when we start recognizing we have to make decisions and we start recognizing, which you know you do, whether you like it or not, whether you save or not, whether you're in Christ or not, you have to make decisions. You have to make decisions concerning, concerning what risks you are willing to take, what risks you're willing to get involved with, right? That's, that's a given. So the point comes back though is, is that if we start recognizing that we need to manage our risk and recognize the decision that we make, the course of actions that we take or will take, if we start incorporating seek ye first in those decisions, meaning put God first in our decisions of the risk that we have to consider and everything that we do, man, we 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 we'll be we we'll be, we'll be, we'll be on we we'll be making it we 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 will have that life and peace not based on rules but based on the fact is that we don't want to do something that's going to impact negatively in the kingdom of God in your life and the people around you right because all those risks all the decisions that we make dealing with those risks will bring forth a harvest and you guys say what a harvest i'm talking about the fact that it'll bring fruit it'll bring fruit to what we do so for example when i sit there and say managing your risk i want you to look at it from from a biblical perspective you i think you find it that i thought it was deep really <laughs> myself too you know it says first of all it says in first corinthians uh chapter six we're talking about the fact is that uh know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of god now why, why i want to say that first why is that important because if one of the decisions you have to make is whether you want to stand on unrighteousness or righteousness and then on what righteousness right because i'm really talking about the righteousness of god but that that that's 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 the, that's the decision that we have to make as far as what are we right but just you need to know here's here's the unrighteous it says right here know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of god that's a risk for itself right a decision a person has to make do i want to inherit the kingdom of god if i do then i understand being unrighteous and being uh, uh allowed to operate in unrighteousness is equal a decision which is shall not inherit the kingdom of god right i mean that that's just a something you have to make a decision on that's a risk some people take i mean you you gotta realize that some people do make that decision i don't want to inherit the kingdom of god i don't believe in the kingdom of god that's what some people would say so therefore they take a calculated risk matter of fact people take a calculated risk whether they're in christ or not you know what i mean you know that uh <laughs> people 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 uh make a decision uh whether they they are uh whether they want to receive christ whether they want to believe god whether they want to believe in the in, in our faith our doctrine our christianity uh and 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 let's say for somebody an atheist they're they're having faith in their decision they're calculating the risk 
of saying there is no God. That's their calculation. And, 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 and they know, we know, all of us know, that you won't know anything until you leave this world. Hey, brother, how you doing? I'm doing okay. You know, Man. I had to go back in my email and find an old... Invite. Uh, it should be old, but it should be there. <laughs> yeah, that one well, is I'm old. That one is old. I it hope I got it. I hope I got a long way out, man. I, I got something, brother, that I, that I think is deep. I want to share with you this morning. Look at the okay. title there. You see that title? Managing Your Life Risk in Christ. Yes. And not by yes. What I what has come up with this, and I'm, 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 I'm going to come off just for a moment, then we'll come on back. Okay. Good. Can you hold off? Because I'm going to go grab some coffee. Go get some coffee, bro. I just keep talking then. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Woo! Why, why, why the brother going to grab his coffee? I'm going to go back to the uh, <laughs> the uh, slide I had in, in place. Uh, the, 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 the key piece I'm trying to say <laughs> is in life, we have to understand every last person here, every person listening, every person that will listen, there are risks that we have to take. That is, you know, I was looking at, I was, my fact, it made me think about the other day when I, I used to, remember, I, I mentioned a comment a while, a while ago about this song, a movie I used to look at a long time ago. We were beautiful. At least the songs were beautiful. Uh, it was talking about a lion that was raising the uh, wilderness, I mean, and domestically caught young and raise up and then to try to incorporate that uh put that line back into the to the well in the well in the wilderness and it was talking about the song that again was the born free i don't know if, i mean some of you gotta go way back and that, that song i think would go way back in the in the 60s and 70s but i think mostly in the 60s but it was about born free as free as the wind you know, I don't know the rest of that song, as many of you probably never even heard of it. Uh, but it was it was a cool song because it was talking about born free, right? And did that that lion go back into the wilderness because it supposed to be free? It supposed to be able to operate and survive in, in, in the wilderness on its own. Well, the problem was that the the uh, when I look at the the kingdom, uh, animal nature uh, or nature. Uh, in the wilderness, uh, especially a lot, they do a lot of videos and even today about lions and how lions uh, go after their prey so they can eat food. You know, they gang up on people and all that other stuff, but they do it. Uh, we find out that it's not, they, they have to take a risk every day. Survival every day, every, I mean, I look at it from insects to uh, birds, uh, snakes and uh, other types of predators and prey uh, making decisions dealing with risk every day you know I mean even right now the wilderness that we we're in our little domesticated life here in our society out there there's a risk that's going on that that's being that's taken uh Every day, even when you look at, you can look on that over there to the insects level, that they are dealing with risk, uh, and they have to survive, and they they are, they got predators out there, you know, uh, and, and 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 some of these predators are very uh, tuned uh, of what they need to do to get their prey, uh, you know, like even with snakes, you're talking about going into uh, a nest or going into a hole where another animal may be and and have to take on that animal to get that animal or that animal to get it, right? <laughs> I mean, I see it's a risk in nature. There's a risk even in our life, right? There's a risk when you, you, you know, nowadays even going to the store, there may be a, a risk that comes up with some, you know, especially you're talking about with active shooters and stuff like that. Now, now there's a risk going to the to the to the mall. There's a risk going to 
Walmart or going to Target or going to one of those other places because the potential of somebody doing being an active shooter, potential of somebody uh, robbing people, those are different potentials of risk that people are doing. And that's why we want to be able to manage our risk, right? <laughs> and, and then, like I said, the beauty I saw of that is if we can get God in part of our risk management, you know? So that's what I, I want to be able to talk about today. Uh, and there's Brother Addison uh, bringing him back into it. Brother Addison, what, yeah. what, what I'm saying is, man, is that uh, when I started off and, and, and talking, was the fact is that most people try to live by the law. We got problems living by the law, right? Even could only Christ to fulfill the law. So if we live by the laws or rules of being legalistic. We found out that it's weak in the flesh, because you know that's what we did. We read a couple of weeks ago in Romans eight what the law could not do, and it was weak to the flesh. God's in His on the Son in the likeness of of flesh, of sin, uh, condemn sin in the flesh, right? Well, my point is, even when we have all of the rules, we know we violate those rules sometimes, right? So so instead of living by rules or laws, why don't we live by managing the risks that we face on a day-to-day -day basis? And I was even talking before you came in, there's a risk when even in the, uh, in the in nature, right? I was sitting there, I was thinking about the old song, you were a, you a little bored by then, uh, Born Free. Remember that song? Born Free. It's, it looks, it sounds so great, didn't it? It's, you know, it's a beautiful song, Born Free, and free as the wind blow, right? But if, if you, that lion that was put into the wilderness, <laughs> To, to learn how to be a king, you know, a, a lion anyway, a predator. What, when I look at all these National Ge Geographic movies and when I look at some of these movies and TV shows and video clips of, of lions and then other animals in the wilderness, uh, there's, a, there's a risk that they have every day for survival, right? To survive, they go through a lot, they take a lot of risk. If you're prey, you 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 take a risk, right? If you're a predator, you take risk. E even a predator has other predators that they have to worry about. <laughs> so so what I'm saying is, for us, maybe it's not so much of the laws. I think some of the laws were based in some of the doctrine and traditions that that we read before. You know, like when the uh, Pharisees and Sadducees said they wouldn't wash, they, they would have to wash their hands before they eat after coming from the market. Mm -hmm. that, that was a that was a probably a health decision, right? A general health awareness uh, to wash your hands before you eat uh, because they're, you know picking up the type of diseases and all that other stuff that 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 happens while you're walking in the marketplace. So they wash their hands. They made it a law, but it was still based on a health decision, public health decision. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. So, so, so what I'm saying is, uh, instead of the and, and the problem with that by making it a tradition, making it a rule or a law, uh, he said, "Well said, Isaiah." that you honor me with your lips, but not with your heart, because your heart is not motivated by these rules and tradition, just your intellect, right? So my point is, and this that's why I put this slide up, and take a look at it again, man. I think this is something we really may want, this may really make a difference in some people's life if we approach it from this perspective is, managing your life risk in Christ or by the word of God or being led by the Holy Spirit and not by the law 
And when I look at risk, and I was talking about it before you came in, in my job, in your life, when you drive your car, you, you know there's a risk driving your car. Time you take that car out of that driveway and mo drive it down the road, you know and you're calculating as you drive potential risk factors that could impact the safety of you driving. You have to, you know, you put on your you put on your seatbelt. It's a law, but you put it on because you know there's a potential risk that if I have an impact with somebody, I could drive, I could be thrown out of one of the cars. Right? And a part, you know, in other words, people do it because of calculating the risk. Time I get on the interstate, time I get on the on the on the on the, on the main road, <clears throat> there's a risk that I gotta watch out for. That's why I gotta become a defensive driver. Remember that in even our classes when they taught us to be a defensive driver. Why? Because there's risk, right? There are potential risk that gets involved with it. So what I'm saying is, let's take a look at our life, calculating the risk that we have to deal with to the best of our ability. And then, you know what the scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Is God incorporating God in your decisions on the risk that you are making or taking every day. So now he's part of your decision-making process. Now that you understand that you are dealing with risk and you have to make decisions about your, you know, potential risk you deal with. Now, where that came from? First of all, in the slide right here next, bring it up. I start off with 1 Corinthians 6, 9. I wanted to show that we used it before and I use it again. It says, know you not that the righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's a decision as well, right? The unrighteous now does not, will not inherit the kingdom of God. And I ain't talking about your own righteousness. I ain't talking, no, I'm talking about God's righteousness. But I am talking about the fact is that some people choose to be atheists, right? Because they have accepted this risk. They accepted the fact that I don't believe that there's a kingdom of God. You know, like you're talking about atheists, right? They have seven the risk that I'm going to go through life without believing in God. And I know that this decision means I will not inherit the kingdom of God. I will not have eternal life because I don't believe in it. That's their decision, correct? Correct. Yeah. And 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 and, and those of us now that, that want to inherit the kingdom of God, we have to recognize that we have to make a decision that leads us away from unrighteousness toward the things of God. He said, be not deceived, neither fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers themselves of mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkard, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. Risk. If I'm going to be a fornicator, risk. Right? <laughs> and and that's and we know that's a risk by itself in the world. There's a there's physical risk of being a fornicator. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, from from sexual transmitted disease, unwanted pregnancy, uh there's risks in there. Uh we know adulterers <laughs> that what what does the risk factor go up when you become an adulterer? The risk factor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what risk?